This episode is sponsored by the Sarong Company. Order your Sarong now at sarongco.com. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Chile Talk. Uh, Happy New Year. I uh, hope everyone had a happy holiday. Uh, today I have a very special guest, but before I introduce her, I'm going to run the intro. So today's guest is a Khmer American small business owner. Her name is Hannah from Atlanta. How are you, Hannah? I'm good. How are you? I can't even I'm believe good. I'm here. I'm great. Thank you for thank you um for having me. Yeah, thank you for being my guest. Why don't you just tell our our listeners uh how how we met or how we made a connection. So and introduce yourself. Okay, I don't, I don't even know where to start. Um uh, well my name is Hannah. Um I'm from Atlanta. I started long story short, let's try to get this as you know, to the get the gist of it. Um I started a small business in the middle of a pandemic and it just blew up. It was never my intentions. To start a business, I wouldn't call myself business-minded. Um, I was really just doing it just to do because I was so bored, tired of playing Animal Crossing in quarantine. So um, <laughs> I picked up a little hobby, like sewing. And it kind of blew up to the point where I had to make a website just to keep track of everything. And as orders were coming in, uh, we had a mutual friend from Philadelphia. And he kind of And he was so adamant about hitting up Pella Chile. And so many people... I mean, in the Khmer, even the Southeast Asian community know who you are. Like, we've been watching you, like, since forever. So I'm just like, no, I'm not going to hit that man up. You know, he's busy <laughs> making memes, and he's busy doing podcasts. And he, you know, like, no. But he just was so adamant. He's like, hit him up, hit him up, hit him up, hit him up. And I was like, okay, fine. So I think I was laying in bed one night, and it was, like, 1 in the morning. And I was like, you know what? Fine. <laughs> I'll hit him up. So I go to your Instagram I find your email and I just shoot you an email and it was like the response was like, Bloom. and I was like, oh, so here. it was. It was very professional and I checked out your website. It was really professional and um, the person that um, referred <laughs> you to me, uh, he's a uh, he's a good he's a good he's a solid person. You know, he's a good friend. Uh, Smiley man, shout out to Smiley from Philly man. So I was Back like, to Smiley, you put yeah. me on. Yeah, Sorry so I was, I'm to glad to hear from him. So I was like, I'm um, you know. You know, a friend of Smiley is a friend of mine, so I'm if I can help in any way, so I, to like you know promote your business and um, share it on my platform. I think you know, I think there's a good a positive thing to do, especially with what you're doing. So if you want to tell the people what what you do, I know that you sew, but you know, let them know what kind of items you you make. You know, so um, I started sewing in the beginning of the pandemic, like around June, July. And I was looking at this sarong, which is one of these little stretchy elastic band waisted. It's more like Southeastern loungewear. You wear it around the house. You were to go, you know, check the mail, cook for your kids, whatever. Um, and it's funny because my grandma would always push me to wear these sarongs. I was like, no. And she'd be like, well, if you don't wear it, you're going to be a whore and your husband's going to leave you and you won't do the dishes. And so I was like, throughout my childhood, I was like, oh, sarongs, I hate sarongs. And um, eventually she passed about five, six years ago. And he had left me one sarong, literally just one, um, that I still have in my closet to this day. So I was wearing it one day and I was just, just staring at it. And like, I don't know what came across the idea, but I was like, this would be really cute if I made it into like a little, a little top, like a bandeau, like a matching set. And um, come to find out that that's like really hard when you don't know how to sew. So I went on Amazon and I purchased a $16 sewing kit. Like ones that you keep in the car or like, you know, under your bed. The ones that collect dust and have like all these cheap little pieces. And I went on YouTube and I learned how to make a scrunchie. And I posted on Instagram and my DMs got flooded. They're like, is this for sale? Is this for sale? Is this for sale? And I was like, uh, Sure. Uh, <laughs> so I just started to like I got my notepad and I just started writing down names and like what they wanted um, and eventually I was out of fabric I was like okay gotta find some fabric so that's a whole another story on how I had to scavenge for it but I ended up mm-hmm. just making scrunchies first and then eventually I purchased my own sewing machine I didn't even know how to turn it on <laughs> but <laughs> but I had to like pop in the DVD and I had this like 1970s like old lady voice teaching me how to turn on how to use it and teaching me about all the parts of the sewing machine. 
eventually I made my first sit Um I think the first sit I made fell apart in the washing machine um, oh, to wow. the person that <laughs> to the person <laughs> that ordered it. And I was like, ew. Um, but after that, it was just, it just grew. It just snowballed into something crazy. Like, so I just started making sarongs over and over and over and over and over again. I did end up making like another style of sarong. So it's more like of a beach cover up, has like a side tie with a coconut shell. Um, the coconut shells were just a gift. So I just used whatever I had and made something out of it. it just, and the people loved it. Wow. That's awesome. And you started like at the beginning of the lockdown and like in Marches or like, or like, uh, before that well, i think they shut in down in march for in for new york anyways it was well, march i think it was like march 13th i literally remember because it was like the day my job sent me the, the letter hmm. saying that oh, i don't have a job for you anymore so after from march to july just being bored that's when i started well so what was going through your mind when uh you your job gave gave you that letter did you uh what was your like how did you react to that did you panic? Time, or like, well, what am I going to do? No, I didn't panic. I, When it comes to finances and when it comes to money, me personally, and when it comes to a lot of things, not just money, but family and relationships and anything, you know, catastrophic, I guess. I'm a very calm person. I don't know why. I think I'm pretty chill. Some way, somehow, something happens. Or some way, somehow, it comes through. Some way, somehow the job gets done. So I just thought of it as a, okay, this is the most time I will get with my daughter. She's three now. You might hear her like come downstairs, but um, from when she was born to up until the pandemic, I was literally working two jobs and going to school and I literally had no time with her. Hmm. So I guess thanks to this, I don't get thanks to the pandemic. Like it just granted me so much time with her. We had the best relationship now. That's awesome. It was a struggle at first because I was so like, it was okay, like how you, do I interview? you made it work somehow. That's cool. That's a good uh, good habit. To, it's a good trait to have to uh, like stay calm and just you know turn you know just have a positive mindset and just make make something ha- make something happen. You know, so, or trust that it'll come. Yeah, some people panic. Some people don't know what to do. So at first, I'm like, dang, what am I gonna do? <laughs> I mean, you know? I mean, I think everybody was thinking that. I I remember opening the letter and being like. Well, I lost both my jobs. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, like, oh, yeah. And then Georgia State, um, the college I was attending at the time, hmm. they switched to completely virtual online classes. Virtual. I was like, okay, I lost my job. I lost, you know, class. So, um, okay. <laughs> but some way, somehow, like, it just, everything worked out. I'm glad it worked out. And I'm glad we made connection. And, um, Let's rewind about, uh, let's, you know, let's talk about a little bit about your background, like where you grew up. Like, how'd you end up in Atlanta? A little bit about your family, like your, how many siblings you have, stuff like that. Um, family backgrounds, I have a mom and dad and a brother. Um, so we don't really live in Atlanta, Atlanta. We live a little bit south side of Atlanta. So um, not too far, really, but nobody knows where Jonesboro is. So we just say mm. Atlanta. Um, right. My parents came here when they were about teenagers. So my mom, I think she was like 13, 14. Really? I think my dad was like 18. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been here all my life. Are you born and raised in Atlanta or Georgia? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Never so lived anywhere parents. else. We did oh. a lot of traveling um, when I was younger, but um, we never lived anywhere else. But cool. um, luckily I was fortunate enough to let them have me see the world. What was it like growing up in uh Georgia, like, um, did you, uh, was it, there's a lot of Khmer people over there in your area? So we or? don't really have a big community. So there's a lot, population wise, yes. But business wise, no. Do you know what I mean? Right. So there's, there's no a lot of restaurants. Here. No. Nah. Um, you see more Laos, more Thai, more Chinese, mm-hmm. more Vietnamese, but um, more nail salons. Right. But you don't really see a lot of like booming. Like we don't have like a real Cambodia town. Like Long Beach has it. Like Philly has it. I was so amazed when I went to Philly. So oh, yeah. Park. Oh, like, Philly's yeah. like a second home. It's like really, literally, an hour and a half bus ride. The Philly um, for me. <laughs> we kind of had something like at the temple. Of course, they'll set up like tents and have vendors and stuff. But we don't have anything like that where it's like you know every weekend in the summer yeah, like or that. whatever. You're talking about FDR Park, right? Yeah. That that's a that's, that's a real cool, cool park. Yeah. 
I was like a kid in a candy store when I went over there. I was like, what? Same here. I had to buy some food. Yeah, I bought some food to go. Like the sachika and stuffed chicken wings. Even I I even got some lift to go. (laughs) It's just like nice to freaking have it there. Like we don't have that. Like you can't just... It really feels like a Cambodian town over there, so that's why I got a lot of love for Philly. And um, I mean, here we have a we have a Cambodia town like sign, but it's literally just the temple. So. Mm, I definitely want to visit Georgia one day. So I have some friends that mm-hmm. live out there. So I've never been to that side of the world. Um, you're so, in Brooklyn, Seattle. I'm Brooklyn, New York, but I'm originally from Seattle. My whole family's from Seattle. Lives in Seattle. I moved to New York ten years ago with a friend and a. I'm still here, so I just find a way to make it work. And um, I love New York. New York's home, so it's like I don't know where else I would live. Like it's, I feel like I, f- I belong here. At well, first, I mean, you know, I'll tell you this: people that you know have lived in Georgia and they move away to wherever they come from or wherever they want to move to, they don't want to come back. Really? So I mean, I can't really compare anything because I haven't lived anywhere else, but they don't want to come back. So I'm like, okay. They don't want to come back to Georgia. They don't, from what I've heard. Uh, Right, maybe they have no. <laughs> yeah, definitely want to visit though. Check it out. So, um, like, what what are your hobbies? Like, how like what, what do you like to do besides uh? Um, do you have hobbies? hobbies? Karaoke. Uh, no, <laughs> actually, if you catch me singing karaoke, just know I am gone. Yeah, I love karaoke. That's like my favorite pastime. I love it. I live for I, karaoke. I love it, but I'm just so shy that you don't even pass me the mic. But if you do, and I take it, <laughs> no, I am gone. I'm not Hannah anymore. What's, what's your go-to karaoke song that you have to sing if, if the mic's in your hand? Love by Keisha Cole. Keisha Cole? <laughs> but just know that I'm gone if I start singing some Keisha Cole. <laughs> <laughs> Keisha Cole, she, she has some bangers. Um, I, I hit him with the Billie Jean if I want to show off. Uh. Michael Jackson, yeah. <laughs> um, Anything Michael Jackson or NSYNC or Backstreet Boys. <laughs> I don't have any other hobbies? I uh, actually picked up digital art during like designing. The, kind of like I would just follow these YouTube tutorials, and it would just teach me how to work the software. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, it came in handy with the Sedona company because I would use it to help my website, or you know. So mm-hmm. um, I like art. I'm not that good at it, but I like to collect it, and I like to you know share yeah. it and whatnot, research Same. it. I just recently started using the iPad. I uh, procreate to use like to, just, to make basic uh, basic logos or even just text. I do all my thumbnails now on YouTube uh-huh. for the podcast. So I think procreate and the iPad like changed my life, you know, because I don't really have designing skills, but it's it's kind of cool to be hands on. So like something you can learn on YouTube too. So I'm always on YouTube trying to get better or trying to download fonts. So that's cool that you yeah uh, procreate. So you do like your sarong and company? Did you do that design or the sarong and company logo? No, that's a very good friend of mine. Um, that lotus flower with the mm-hmm. on top of the lily pad. That's like from my that. very good friend. Who, her name is Talina. Um, I'll give your Instagram you. later. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what's up. Um, so that's your good friend, and um, she did the logo for you. That, that's cool. Like, how 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 important it, is it to you for to have like a like a solid team or people that you rock with in your circle? Like, to me, everything's in house. Like. My best friends make my music for me. So that's why yeah. I, I asked that question. I think it's important to have a team that you love, like family. Fool. So I think that yeah. when you, um, I think that everybody has like a skill that they can bring to the table. And in some way, somehow you can collaborate. And you can never, you never know what people are good at until you collaborate sometimes. And you're just like, wow, I don't know you could do this. I don't know you could do that. Let's put something together. And this works for you. And this works for me. And we just support each other. That's, that's love. And just spread the word. Yep. I think I think we need to support each other, you know, more than ever. And uh, you know, I'm all about yeah. my excellence and like, uh, you know, my girl power. And I think what you're doing is positive. It's good for the culture. I think a lot of people, not not even just Khmer, like even the whole Southeast Asian community, Lao Thai, we all they all wear sarongs. You know, even Cham, Malaysian, right. and uh, it's yeah. comfort wear at the end of the day. Like stuff you wear at the beach or at home. You know, my dad wears them. Oh yeah, my dad used to wear sarong too. So it's like even a uh, unisex too. So you know, mm-hmm. I might have I might have to order me some sarongs, you know, make maybe some cool <laughs> colorway or you know, I like I like burgundy. That's my favorite color. If you have any burgundy, let me burgundy, know. Burgundy sells out fast. Mm-hmm. Like I just can't even keep up. Um, it's a good color, like goes well, good think, with the Khmer skin tone, like you know, the dark you know, like right. the golden brown, yeah. 
And I think that is so hard to find the perfect sarong online. Um, I like to customize mine. So if you're shorter, if you're taller, I can fix it for you. If you want it longer, you want to touch the floor, I can do that for you. And like, where else are you going to be able to click, 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 boop. I think that's cool because I don't really see like online stores that sell sarong. I'm pretty sure there are out there somewhere. But it's like really rare to find it like even like uh, locally or I'm in a big mm-hmm. metropolitan city, so it's hard to find in New York. You have to probably go to Philly and go to, like, the Cambodia Town neighborhood with the, the mom right. and pop shop that sell, like, you know, Khmer stuff. Khmer, uh, Khmer, you know? Mm-hmm. But um, I think it's cool. So I think um, you got something going, you know? And um, what, what, was, what yeah. was your experience like like to, when you started getting noticed and people started putting in orders? How, how, how did that feel? It was very... Um like I said, I'm a very calm person. So when things happen, I'm just like, what? Are these are these teams <laughs> seriously ordering for me? Like, are, are you serious? Like, are you, um, were you so happy? Were, like, I would be like, okay, I was happy. let's get it. But don't get me wrong. I was happy. Um, I was taking orders via DM. But then it just got, you know, freaking crazy because one person would DM me and then boom, like the orders get mixed up. And, you know, it just gets the DMs get shuffled around. So I was like, okay, sold out. Everybody sold out. Um, a website dropping, I think it was like August 6th. So August 6th, I dropped my website and I was wow. like, okay, so now it'll be easier to keep track of things. And I remember getting my first order and I was like, okay, yay, woo. And then like, they just got flooded. And I'm just like, I think I woke up the next morning and I was like, what on earth? Like, are these people <laughs> seriously? Like what? <laughs> so it was a very, I, I mean, I remember going to the post office with, um, like two or three poly mailers in my hand. And like with a handwritten address and just dropping it off there. But now I have like a system. Um, I invested in a roller printer. Mm-hmm. I think That's the best efficient to this day. The, yeah. Yeah. That's like the best feeling. Yeah. Yes. So it saves you so much time. Watching all those labels print out after each shop is like, wow. Thank you. Thank blessing, you. Blessing, yeah. Yeah, very blessing. And I've um <laughs> why do I want to cry? I've gone through a lot of, I mean, from the pandemic to now I've gone through like a lot of family changes and a lot of things like externally outside of the business. Um, so when you go through something that makes you not want to get up in the morning, makes you not want to put in the work that you want to do, makes you not want to, you know, be your best self. And then, but you still have people out there supporting you. So when I say thank you, I really, really mean it. I like to write a little handmade note, like a handwritten note and slip into every single order. And I like to pour my heart out into those notes. Even if I've never even met the person before, it's like, thank you so much for supporting my business in the middle of this pandemic, around Christmas time. Thank you. That's a, that's a, that's personal, and it's yeah. like you know, it's like a it as that a attention. It's like a, you know, attention to detail, and like you, uh, like you care about your customers. What you, I think is important, yeah. and um, yeah. I appreciate stuff like a, you know, a little thank you card, even in a care package. Like some of my friends, they'll they'll write me a little note and make it all. Mm-hmm. With like good handwriting and cursive, I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. And it makes sure you don't want to like throw it away. Just you want to, you know, know, put it in your collection. So it's like, it means I'm a lot, afraid. you know. A little goes a long way. Just a, a small detail, you know. So like, I like what you're doing too. Like, cause I I check I check your like your highlights on your Instagram. So and you're you're even giving tips to people that how to you know how to run a business. You you tell what kind of where you get your poly mailers. So that, I admire that. I'm like you know, some people want to keep it secret. Yeah. They want to be like you know, you, you share the knowledge, and it's good. I'm mean, like oh shoot, I might have to write that down because I might need my poly mailers. See, I'm almost out of poly <laughs> mailers. So he's got you know you, you know you you send them give them links to where it's uh, affordable and uh, it's a deal. So you know, I I, I salute you for that, and uh, I think you that's a great thing to do. Mm-hmm, put that's people on. And when exactly. I feel that when you when you put it out, it just comes back to you in abundance. And I really, if my friends and my family have questions about how to start a small business, by all means, hit me with every single question you got. I'll help you out. I really don't mind. Like, I think it's a great thing. And I want I really mm. don't want to see anybody fail. I really don't. I want to see everybody do good. I want to see everybody win. I'm and I saw this. I agree. Post. Um, I think I saw it. Was, I think it was a Facebook or a Twitter post or something. It was like, this generation of new business owners We'll put you on. They're not greedy with, you know, their information. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're not going to, you know, teach you how to actually step by step slay the dragon, but we will push you there. Right. You actually got to put in the work and the info's out there. Like even on TikTok, I'm on TikTok learning all kinds of things. I'm on producer TikTok, right. how to do this, how to do that, how to, you know, how to invest your money. I'm on stock, t- stock TikToks. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, everything's, everything's 
at our in the fingertips of our phones. So I was like, wow, this is a lot of it's knowledge. Awesome. I've never seen so much game for everyone, free free information for everybody, it's more mm-hmm. than more than ever now. You know, everything's accessible. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just up to us to execute because we could just right. watch all day, but we got we got to go out and get it too. Right, because how much scrolling do you do? But do you actually do it? I really don't remember <laughs> all the things I've liked on TikTok to save for letter for for yeah. later. Yeah, I have a lot of save save stuff for later. <laughs> but um, how do you feel about like um, social the power of social media and um, and how you use it to market? Like, I think face like Instagram, Instagram and TikTok now is like becoming my my favorites to like promote my my music, my my videos, my my business. You know, like new merch yeah. alert. You know, so it's like and it helps. So it's like, it how do you feel about the whole digital? Like online social media age, are we in a? Is it what a time to be alive right now? Are we in a good. We get a. It's a good. I, I like it. I guess it's the best free advertising. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And you just have to use it wisely in a, an efficient way. Um, my number one thing that I tell people is know your market. Who are you selling to? I know that you know, Yay is not going to buy my salon from online. So you, <laughs> just, <laughs> you just have to know who your market is. Um, cater to them but you know keep an open mind to everything um there's a lot of ugly that comes with social media i haven't gotten much backlash or anything or many much hate i guess you would say but there is a lot of ugly that i've seen and you just can't you can't let one wrongdoing or one bad little post you know Mm -hmm. make you feel like oh i could i just shut this wrong company down nah don't do that. Just go even harder. Just you know, I think you know the hate just fuels me. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of trends to follow out there. I think my personal favorite trend right now is support. It's a trend to support each other these days. Finally, something positive instead of bashing each other. All these inspirational quotes like "girl mom" or mm-hmm. "girl boss," "mother hustler." I love stuff like that. Like that's yeah, I the love biggest seeing trend. it. You know, I love seeing other women supporting each other other women too that's you know i've seen a lot too i've seen like a lot of like change stories you know and they tag their their friends with businesses so that's love you know i'm all about that yep, too there's so much room for everybody to win there's so much money to be made out there why are we taking out a few people's pockets like it's yep. fine you can all just lean on each other it's not a big deal there's so Every, much money everybody out there. eats you know <laughs> everybody eats. everybody can eat you can eat at my mm-hmm. table it's fine same i feel the same what's your Hot sell your top selling item and um who was like the first to order like what state what city um uh, for the most part when I was beginning um a lot of my orders from, were from Atlanta um and then eventually they started to branch out to places like Tennessee California Florida um the Carolinas South Carolina North Carolina Philly got a lot of support from Philly Washington got plenty of support in Seattle. Um, yes. even Ohio, like all of these Iowa, like what? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in Nebraska? I was like, Nebraska? Who's They're probably in, Nebraska? in the boonies. They're probably in the woods, you know. So, like, dang, I gotta get a salon. Uh, to Nebraska. Nebraska's <laughs> actually, um, I don't know if there's like a big population there, but like, I know some friends that are they immigrated there and they started out there, but they ended up in Seattle. So, yeah, like, and I mean, my number one there. goal is to be re- oh, in Seattle. No, um, some people like settled to Nebraska at first and then they. Went to Seattle. Well, like my friend See, did. I, I never knew that. And my number one goal was to reach those who kind of live in a place like me, like where you can't go to the store and buy a Um My number one selling item was the scrunchies because they were the first things I ever made. I sell them like three pack, four pack. Um, sometimes I'll do one that matches your sarong. Um, if you request that, I can do that too. Mm. Uh, right now, I've slowly gone into jewelry, jewelry and accessories. So I just had a drop. Um, this past weekend, it was just some jade, some jewelry. That went really well. Like, That's almost awesome. everything's gone. So I'm like, huh, gotta keep up with the demand again. So that, like jade, but, like necklace, right? The... Necklaces, pendants, um, blah, 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 blah. just necklaces for now. Nice. I want to do rings too. Though. I like jade a lot. Yeah. It's, jade's a good, uh, mm-hmm. it's a rock. That's what you're it's wearing a, around your neck. A stone. A stone. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the stone. <laughs> Uh, so, signifies yeah. purity, wisdom, strength, prosperity, wealth, awesome, um, good health, all that. Typical cultural staple. 
of the Asian community. So uh, how's uh, like, how do you feel about the growth of your Sarangan Company Instagram page? Like, how, did you, uh, I don't know how, I think I've seen your name maybe on the Explore page somehow, like, mm-hmm. or people sharing in your story. But um, like, um, how'd you first start promoting your business? Was it through word of mouth or is it you promoted the Instagram? Um, I remember the day I made that Instagram, it was more word of mouth. So it was really people just sharing the post. Um, the first post ever you'll see is like a, a square picture of all these like scrunchy colors just all bunched up together. And people, the people just went wild over it. And my friends were sharing it. Their friends were sharing it. So back to the whole power of social media thing, it just goes to show like if there's more positivity, there's more reach. Good reach. Right. Well, there's good reach and then there's bad reach. But, <laughs> but um, mostly it was word of mouth. Hashtags, uh, I'm not too crazy about hashtags. I haven't seen, I haven't got much feedback from hashtags. Um, I like to use something that engages with my people. So the little mm-hmm. slidey little flame thingy with the hard eyes or a mm-hmm. poll, or I like to talk to them. Um, doing Personal, a Q&A. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah Ask me anything. that's good. That's good. To be like, communicate. I'm a Maybe I can relate to somebody, like to another mom. Right, running right. A business. Mom in general, ask me about my daughter, ask me about what I like to eat or a day in the life. Yeah, what do you like to eat? Like, what's your, I like to ask my, my guests, what's your favorite Khmer food? Let's see. That's hard question. <laughs> I know it is. I think you asked so many good ones. Yeah. Um, I was actually craving kha today, but chicken kha. I chicken? know I'm weird. People like the, yeah, people like the pork belly one, but I like the, I like just like meat. I'm not crazy about the fat part. I don't think I've had so, chicken kha. Um, I'd be open to it, but uh, I like the fatty uh, pork. It's, that's what I mean, I do too. I do too, but sometimes I just want just straight protein. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, it's like drowned in grease, but whatever. Right, it's bomb. What's yours? Is that your top, your ultimate favorite? I like a... God. If I had See? to choose one. I to, if I had to choose one, salam with you through, I always say it, but um, I really like the, the simple stuff too, like the intestines mm-hmm. with bahok or steak and bahok. Okay, yeah. like, so that was what my dad was eating. That's like his favorite. So whatever he ate, I like. I like to eat, you know. Yeah. Or even plias, I go like the the raw, the raw style. You know, mm-hmm. where they cook it with just the the lime juice. I don't mm-hmm. even want them to be cooking it in any boiling water. Just, just straight up citrus. Right. You know, I like yeah, that way. Acidic. The bloody, you know, the acidic. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't like it when they cook it. I'm like, dang it, it's it's ruined. <laughs> know, it's ruined, even just a little, bit. Yeah, <laughs> even I, a little bit. I, I want it still kind of, you know. A home. I know. And then a lot mm-hmm. of people freak out about it. I'm like, dude, grow up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, is Balut an Asian or is it a Cambodian thing? Or it's, it- a, it's a, it's, it's, we call it Pong Tiacon, but um, Filipinos eat it hardcore too. Like they love that stuff. So they call it Balut. Um, I'm pretty sure other Asian countries eat it too. Like probably the Malaysians and, you know, mm-hmm. maybe some Chinese. Cause I get it at the Chinese grocery store in Manhattan. The, I freaking love Balut. I love it a lot. I eat the baby. I eat it. I eat everything. I don't. I don't. I don't throw away nothing. I even eat the hard eraser part. We call it the eraser. The the rubber. The eraser. rubber part. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I'm too grown. I like to, but I think my mom made it so much, and my dad that I was like, oh, I'm sick of this. Um, what else do I like? Hold on. Something's gonna come to me because my chow. mom will always yeah, ask me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that, no I think everybody loves that. <gasps> there you go. There you go. I like it. It's a good mm-hmm. answer. Nobuchuk Something different, eat. you know? <laughs> yeah. I hate the yellow one. Yeah. The yellow one? I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, it grew on me later. Like, I didn't really like it as a kid. <laughs> I ate it with just I mean, uh, I the noodles with just the <laughs> eel. You ever done that as a kid? Yeah, I, I'm like, but my daughter does it now. She'll be like, I just yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Eating water. Yeah. How old is your daughter, by the way? What's her name? Her name is Lauren. She is three and a half. She'll be four in May. You can probably hear her slump stomping upstairs. Lauren. Mm-hmm. Cool. So how has motherhood changed your life? What's it like to be a mom? Think of every single department. It has changed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I actually, I think a lot of people have a hard time admitting it, but I'll admit it. It took me a long time to kind of accept it and embrace it because it changes everything. Your daily routine, your mind, your body, your self-confidence, 
you're, you know, it was hard for me to get up in the morning and, you know, do the things that I would usually do with ease. Um, so I was really sad for a really, really long time. I loved my daughter though. Really sad, but I, there was a lot of self doubt to why am I not as maternal as these other women on Instagram? Hmm. Instagram. So that's another thing. Our <laughs> social media. The yeah. power of social media can make or break you. Yeah. It can really well, some some of these Instagram it. people they 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 put it just for Instagram. They like you know. Some True. People, some and people act, act every, like everything's all gravy on Instagram. You know, for True. me, I I, keep, I try to keep it a buck with everything I do. You know, mm-hmm. even on Instagram. <laughs> I mean, so yeah, you, you know, like um, <laughs> like if I'm if I'm broke, I say I'm broke. That's that's me. Like I embrace the the poverty because that's where I'm from. <laughs> so I was like. I try to poke fun at it and just, you know, just make people laugh. Because, you know, a lot of us, really, right. a lot of us came up the same way. Like, you know, food stands from Section 8, you know, just the Cambodian American hustle, you know, the, you know, rags to riches story, you know, or mm-hmm. rags to uh, middle class. <laughs> I wouldn't say riches. <laughs> Lower middle class. <laughs> Lower middle class, you know. <laughs> That's I love funny. it. But, yeah. So, um, what would you say your, uh, your biggest accomplishment is so far in life right now having more time with my daughter sounds i mean it's almost like i was running away mentally from motherhood you know it was so Mm -hmm. hard for me to accept because there was so much self-doubt like am i even doing enough does she even love me (laughs) you know goo goo gaga at that point but it was i don't know you just go through this very hard phase of like trying to accept it and um but right now i'm so proud that i'm able to accept it like we are with each other 24 7 we are like conjoined by the hip with the sarong company i mean it's not like i'm working it's not like i have to clock in at eight and leave by five i can do it at my own leisure i can do it whenever i want i can do it when she's sleeping i can just be like here i've had mom's gonna sew and she understands and it's so cute she'll be like mommy mommy's not mommy she's the swan company and then she'll tell people she'll be like my mommy makes swan <laughs> Yeah, she'll call them swans. She's so a cute. hype man. That's so cute. I love it. Yeah, she loves it. She'll be like, I want a pink one. I want a pink one. And I'll have to go make her a pink one. But that's she, my number one. She get one. all the new releases. And that's good to have a little sidekick. And it's important to have family first. Like, if I had a kid, like, I'm pretty sure my life would change too. Probably drastically. Spoke, yeah, drastically. It's me. <laughs> so. But if I did not have her, I don't think I would have made something out of nothing. You know what I mean? Right. It's that extra motivation that pushed something to work for. So right. I think that's so, cool to, you know, hear your story, mm-hmm. and your then relationship. The small businesses. I mean, not only are you supporting me, you're supporting my daughter. Somehow Georgia Power hasn't come cut off our lights yet. Mm. So every single order, that's big real. or small, that's we're real. truly so thankful for it. Make sure you guys support Sarong Company. Uh, I put and all the information. Me. I'll put all the information on the screen. Um, it's Sarong and Company. dot co or uh, Sarong. The, so my Instagram name is the Sarong Co. Mm-hmm. But all as a whole, legally, it's the Sarong Company. Okay, cool. But, um, what are your uh, sure. What are some of your goals for your company? Any any uh any any goals you want to achieve or any um new drops you plan on doing maybe some something for uh men i want i want i want a sarong <laughs> headband i told you i, I know, said uh, I make know. me a custom um, headband out of a sarong i think that would be cool okay so i'm working on a lot of things but like i said um i'm, I'm still very new to sewing i haven't even been sewing for a year yet so i'm trying to like really really master it mm-hmm. my first scrunch was ugly so i don't want to give you an ugly headband Imagine, uh, it's probably the same concept. Like, I have this Kamai one I got from the Philly block party. I think I stole it from somebody. I'm like, yo, let me wear it for a picture. I never gave back. But I'm, oh. it's like, I'm pretty sure it's just an elastic band and some kanat. Uh-huh. It's probably, I know, I just probably really one size fits make- all, you know? <laughs> so probably <laughs> don't have to overthink most- it. You know, I think you could probably uh, make it happen. Or maybe maybe, so maybe make a few drafts. Make Send me a few drafts and so try on my head. My head's not that big. Yeah. I have a pretty small head. You can be my yeah. guinea pig. Yeah, I could be I'm your uh, on, your test dummy. I'm working on something for the guys. Hopefully around Valentine's Day. Ooh, ready. Valentine's is right around the corner. Time flies. It's a, 
it's almost it's 2021. Like, I'm not even used to saying 2021 yet. We gotta we gotta find a I way know. to shorten it. Let's just call it. Yo, this is 21 year 21 or 2021. Just sounds weird. It don't it don't roll out the tongue right. Like 2020. The 2020 was hard. Went by so fast. Yeah, and 2020 is a crazy year for all of us. You know how 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 what type of like uh how how did you hold up during the pandemic? What type of I'm pretty sure we all had to overcome some adversity. What are some of like the biggest challenges you had to deal with besides uh s- starting a business to make ends meet, but also uh you know what kind of like obstacles did you face? Being a stay at home mom. <laughs> Usually I'm a busybody. Like I get up relatively early and I come home pretty late. Just working, 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 class, 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 study, gym. So being at home with her was, it reminds me a lot of when I first gave birth. Am I doing enough for her? Is she learning enough for me? Am I giving her enough attention? Are we getting enough fresh air? Are we Uber Eats? Thing? Are we door dashing our food too much? Mm-hmm. Like, am I cooking enough? Like, is she wearing her mask right? It was just a lot of <laughs> self doubt. But mm-hmm. I think we've just because I've stuck with this lifestyle of you know not working. It's so easy, breezy right now. Mm-hmm. So eventually, once you accept it, you find a way that works. You find a system, and it's gravy. Like she's so easy to take care of, and she's she takes care of me too. That's good. So that's the best part about it. That's my number one thing that I got over with. I was like, am I going to be a stay-at-home mom? Like, I'm going crazy again? Mm-hmm. No. Eventually I did, but it wasn't that bad. How much school do you have left? Or are you, do you plan on continuing school? Are you going to make this your full-time business and just make this work? Um, so back to the goals I have for the Sedona company. One of my goals is to expand it to where I don't have to worry about working. I can just focus on school because I have... I've knocked out all the hard classes. I just have like maybe a year left. If I could just like put my head down and focus and not worry about anything else finance wise, that'd be great. Mm-hmm. What's your, what's your, um, what, what are you going to school for? Is it like, a, is there a major? Is there some, is there, is there a certificate I, you're trying to get to apply to your future career goals? I'm a goals? neuroscience major at um, Georgia State University. Oh. So my number one dream was to be a doctor. Um, oh, wow. Eventually. Yeah, I know. That's another story. So eventually I kind of got to the realization that the lifestyle was just whew, being a mom is kind of, I mean, people, I've seen people, it can be done, but would it satisfy me? Would it bring me enough happiness? Yes. I have a natural affinity to neuroscience and neurology. I love mm. the brain. I love the science behind it. It's so interdisciplinary. Like it can be applied to literally every single thing you can imagine. Mm. Um, so I wanted to be in the medical field. But I wanted to find something that had more lateral mobility, like more flexible with momhood and now the businesshood. So I don't know. I kind of some people tell me I sell myself short and I don't think or I don't push myself hard enough or I have to think bigger. And so maybe I'm trying to think big and have it get to a point where it's so big that I don't have to worry about money. So I can focus on school and figure out Mm. what to do with that neuroscience degree. Right. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. You're still in school. Uh, not right now, but maybe when we we'll get to a point where I do go back and mm. finish that one last year. It's only a year. One year. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So, did you do a lot of school? Like, I'm I'm thinking neuroscience. This sounds like a lot of years. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, so anything in like that field? Her. I feel like if some people go to like sometimes eight years of college. I'm like, dang, right? That's a yeah. long time. And you graduate when you're like 50. No, but um, I'm, <laughs> I'm just working on my undergrad right now. Oh, another thing I wanted to do. I wanted to be a college professor. Can you just see? Oh, really? Like my coffee, my yeah. Case? Your apple. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I can just run my mouth about it. You know. <laughs> I think you'd be a good teacher. You see, you can, yeah, I can see you being a teacher. Um, How important is school to you or for your – do you think you see school um, important for your – for like the it next gen, important. like for your your daughter, you you you'd, uh, you'd want her to go to college and all that, right? Or I want her to do what makes her happy, and I want her to be ready for college if she decides to go. When I started, I wasn't ready for it. I don't know anything about college. Um, 
So I do value, you know, investing in your education, whether it's a trade school, a college, a four-year, uh, four-year university or a two-year associates. Like it doesn't, investing in like these, you know, day classes where people go learn about investing in real estate, something that, you know, fuels your brain and sets you on fire and you can be able to supply it. Like that's what I want her to do. You don't have to be a doctor, baby. You don't have to be a lawyer either. You gotta be a nurse. You don't have to be an engineer. Just something, whatever you want to do, like the Sedona Company. You love. Yeah. Um, it's taught me so much about the business world, and I was so like, do people really go to college and major in business? Now I see why, because it's, woo, it's a lot. Was it was a lot of the like the business side? Was it was it all like self learning, like self taught, like like learning like how to use like what's it called? online store like Shopify was that easy to pick up so the only reason I even know about Shopify to begin with was because shout out to Smiley he mentioned something about something else and I, re- I just remembered it I just pulled it out of my brain one day I was like hold on so I just went on there you see he just kind of like plants these ideas yeah so shout out to Smiley um shout out to my uncle too he um is a businessman himself and having a mentor really helps because you're just like what do I do what do I do first I'm going to do this right. I'm going to get sued. I'm mm. going to jail. <laughs> so definitely having somebody to, you know, as a mentor, as a guide to, to be an open book. It's perfect. That is good to have on your team. Definitely. So, um, like, how do you normally do your, your drops? Do you have like a certain am- X amount of sarongs to re- every release? And then I see that like every time you drop something, they sell out quick. So that's, that's a good problem to have. So, <laughs> what's the you what's your uh, inventory out. like <laughs> like <laughs> inventory so i like again like when i first started out i was on business minded so i was on i didn't, didn't didn't even know how to scale for profit so i would like just barely break even and then like a little bit then some but not you know anything excessive and crazy hmm. um eventually um i found a vendor to help me get my fabric so what i'll do is i'll kind of like take an account the things that people want so people love blue green burgundy um mm-hmm. they're not crazy about anything go home like no reds oranges yellows eh, maybe purple. but purple purple's mm-hmm. hot um so i'll make as much as i can here's what i'll do i'll be like dang i haven't had a drop in a minute let's look at my calendar i'll pick a day and i'll post it this is the day that you know we're gonna drop mind you i haven't sewn not one thing <laughs> so that kind of gives me a deadline to go and sew as much as I can until that day. And then when the day comes, midnight, and I, I use those two weeks to market and um, to hype the people up, to get them excited. And um, I think if people have like caught on to the pattern that I sell out in 24 hours, so they are they anticipate it, which is great. It's kind of what I wanted. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's how good. I it. Um, so are you, are you going to continue to just do like drop by drop or is will you – eventually have like a whole bunch of sarongs on deck so you're just gonna autopilot um i think i would need help to get to the autopilot point um because fabric is so hard to find even yeah. now in certain color that people demand i have to do it by drops until i have somebody helping me doing this autopilot thing um especially if i do you know expand maybe in the future who knows um, I want somebody I can trust, somebody who can sew it the way I want it done because mm. I don't want, you know, different sizes for, and then everything is all a <laughs> mess. So, yeah. Um, I would love to have it like that, but for now, until I can really get things in order, which they are slowly coming together. So each drop, I try to make it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so I'll really have to like lock myself in my room. Just and right now, it's just you by yourself. Doing everything, the sewing yeah. and the shipping, handling. Me. One, Me, um, one woman I'm army. I'm doing everything. Yeah, I'm doing everything right now. It's such a nice feeling, though, like to just be able to control literally everything. I don't have to set an alarm. I can literally start sewing as soon as I wake up. I have my ball. Awesome. You don't mm-hmm. have to answer to no boss. No, I don't. That's good. Which is nice. I'm very blessed to have it. I used to knock people all the time. They'd be like, I want to be my own boss. I'm like... What for? Now I know. You know. <laughs> now you're a boss lady. I know. I'd be like, man, shut up. <laughs> Get to work. <laughs> cool. Sarong and company. So definitely shout out to Selena. 
the one who draws Talina? everything for me. Talina? Yes, Talina. Mm-hmm. All right. She, Shout out to Talina, team. my designer that did the Sarong and Company logo. Is she looking for mm-hmm. uh, for work too? I could put out her info maybe. up oh, yeah. so maybe mm-hmm. people want to hit her up for some designs. They could, they could holler at her. Yes. So she does stickers, um, prints. She did this really pretty upside up print. I'll send you a picture of that too. So you can just throw up there. So no, maybe maybe I'll hire some for some design because, you know, I'm not a designer, so. Oh, yeah, me cool. neither. That's what I hired her. And she did Definitely. the thank you notes for me, um, the ones that I write on the back of. Every time I need some more, she comes through like that. And she has it ready. I don't yeah. even know if we're she, friends. So I might have to add her after the, after the, after this. Yeah. Add her. I think she'll be thrilled to work with you. Yeah, I'll check out her work. I'm, you know, always looking for people to, you know, network with, support. I think it's important to support each other. And um, meet meet new people. Well, it was a there's a big world out here. There's so many talented people, you know. I know you just keep meeting more people. A lot of talented, Crazy. you know, Khmer people and Khmer Khmer America and beyond. You know, I definitely want to mm-hmm. link up with like our Lao neighbors. You know, just you know, just bring unity. Lao, Thai, whatever, Viet. I definitely want to like show support for each other. Right. You know? When the OGs are gone one day and then the whole world is just left with us, I don't want, you know, the food to go out of, you know, what's it called? I don't want the food to just extinct. be up in the middle of the <laughs> Extinct. <laughs> I don't want, you know, sarongs to go extinct. I don't want the language to be extinct. Your Khmer is really, uh, really good. Uh, I don't, I don't, no, nah, it's Tomada. It's good. It's Tomada. It's regular. Like, I feel no, like I need, to, I need to improve. Like, I just know the basic, basic, like, you know, barely. To me, I don't. Uh, to me, I could get better. <laughs> okay, well, I'm like below you, so. <laughs> I, I think no, it's like just... a lot of us are the people because well, you know how we grow up. You know, we go to school, we get more Americanized, we play BSI Khmer a little bit. You know. Okay. Every... See, I can't even like that <laughs> phrase at the top of my head. We, so. we we forget our language a little bit because we're just used to speaking English to our sister, our brother, right? Our, our, our friends. <laughs> yep. And that's what my parents warned me about growing up too, and they're right, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. But so you know, we don't support each other. He's gonna go extinct. Yeah, I think it's important to keep our culture alive, whether it be the clothing we wear, our music, our comedy. You know, Sarong is like very cultural. It's very um village, you know, clothing. You know, like you know, mm-hmm. the kanat is a. Uh, Special, isn't it? It's like silk or something, or like a, a kamaika oh, nut. So it's a really ones. good fabric, right? Um, the material. Usually it's cotton or like a cotton polyester blend. Mm-hmm. There's some silk ones. I'm not crazy about the silk ones. I just don't. Think it's too like hard. It's too krah, right? It's too. Uh, it's not bendable yeah. like the. Yeah. Yeah, like this one's like very flowy. Like it just flows yeah. that way. The home like Yeah. Yeah. It feels more free. Cool. I mean, the um, silk ones you can wear for like a wedding. <laughs> oh yeah, like the even the fancy ones, right? They're more like what's mm-hmm. there's a name for it. It's not called around mm-hmm. like kabun, the kabun. Oh the yeah, more the traditional. Kabun. Yeah, see, yeah. your kabun is really good. <laughs> a little bit, you know. <laughs> think, think. <laughs> see, I can just order food and cut somebody out. That's it. It's not gonna give me. <laughs> I feel you, Atlanta. Hannah yep. from Atlanta. Hannah from. So, uh, are you? Uh, People got questions they can hit you up on a DM. Yes, it... that's me. Up the way. Cool. And uh you do custom you do custom fits, custom fitting, like yeah. maybe maybe we got friends that are plus size, you could you could make it work. Mm-hmm. Or the scum scum people. The scum scum, the extra small, the XS. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or um kids. Kids, yeah. I don't really like to make like a lot of kids stuff. I like I'd rather have them custom made because everybody's mm. different sizes. Um, yeah. Whereas you know the adult sarong is one size, but it's literally single, every single body. For a hot minute, when I first made my Instagram, people were like, "Who is this person?" <laughs> and then like people were sending me the sarong company. I'm like, "Dude, that's me." They're like, "What?" And I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> surprise." <laughs> the secret is out. I am sarong and company. Right. So how's that, identity. you know, all your friends and family have been pretty supportive of your uh, business venture? Like, how's that like? Yeah. Um, I actually just had some family come down from Kansas City, and they supported my J-Drop 
like crazy. So I got a lot of reach from that too. Awesome. Um, so thankful for them. They took care of me all week and they really, really supported my business. I mean, they were just talking to me, hyping me up, like just pushing me, you know, just pushing mm. me to not sell myself short. Uh, my mom was, I remember when I first time, my mom was like, this business is not going to last you that long. Blah, blah. <laughs> but now she's ordering fabric for me. So I'm like, you're hired. I think yeah, it's a. I think it's a good business. Uh, I I don't. I think it might might be you know something good for you, like uh, for the culture. Uh, people are always gonna need sarongs. It's like rare, you know. It's a rare item. So, right. If someone could just order online, boom, fast shipping. Like yo, it's right. It's, it's a no brainer. I mean, besides holiday season. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's super fast shipping. So I mean, I kind of went through a whole ordeal with. USPS and trying mm. to get my order shipped Oh, with the whole pandemic. Like, yeah, like the holiday shipping was delayed Ooh. a little bit. I got some stuff, some care packages that came mad late. Like someone sent me a box of chocolates from uh, Tacoma, Washington, and, you mm -hmm. know, it, it came after Christmas. <laughs> yeah. But it's cool. I mean, it's nice. I still have people who are just now getting their strongs today, and they ordered, like, before Christmas, so I felt horrible. But oh. um, other than holiday season, I guess I just won't drop around holiday season anymore. I'll just do, like, way before, like, December yeah, 1st or Yeah, like something. advanced, yeah, advanced drop. Yeah. It's because, you know, Ricky, like, Ricky as part of the, it's, uh, you know, it's not your problem. It's the USPS fault, so. Right. But I try to do everything in my power to recover all the packages. Luckily, nothing has been lost. Any complaints? Any um returns? As a business owner, I haven't I didn't heard any returns yet. Though I don't want to accept returns because, you know, I don't know if you heard, but there's a whole virus going around. Yeah. Um, COVID 19. Yeah, yeah, serious. So keep it. No return. Yeah. Sorry. Um, wow. No returns, no exchanges yet. Yet. I don't know. It's coming. I know it's coming. So, but I mean, but if. If there, if you ever get a faulty item, I never have a problem uh, replacing it. Never. A faulty item. Cool. Mm -hmm. So Hannah, I think we had a great conversation. Um, anything else you want to say? Um, any shout outs you want to give? Well, shout out to my mom for watching my mean. child. Um, mm -hmm. oh, yay! Can oh, she's a yay. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you for the people who put me on. You know who you are. For the people that support me. Um, friends and family, um, Talina, again, for making my, my logos and my thank you cards so I can pour my heart out into these thank yous for literally everybody who orders, big or small, like people who wait on the website at 11.59, like that really touches my soul. I'll sit there on Shopify and I'll be like. <laughs> All these notifications <laughs> bling in, right? <laughs> yes. 100%. Like people don't understand like how much I appreciate it. So I really, truly appreciate everybody. Um, shout out to USBS. Yeah, shout out to the male people working mm -hmm. through these crazy times. Right, right. I'm just truly thankful every single day. I really am for the nice DMs. People, random strangers, be like, "I love what you're doing." Oh my God, thank you so much. And I'm like, "No, thank you." I had an order in Canada the other day. An order in like, Canada. Yeah, so I was like, "What?" That's yeah. awesome. So uh, right now, do you ship? Uh, do you ship uh, worldwide, or is there some countries that you don't ship to, or what? I do ship worldwide. Um, I've only shipped to two other countries so far. They've been Malaysia and Canada. Malaysia, I was wow. like really surprised about. I'm like, what? Do you guys don't have a market out there? Like, wow, whatever. that's awesome. I, know, I was like, I know. That's it was international amazing. love. I would think Malaysia has those canats, but that's cool. It's you get awesome. international love. That's a, probably a great feeling. How would you feel? It's humbling. Like, thank you for choosing me. Even wow. the people, you know, in Long Beach, like, you guys have a market out there, but you you'd still choose me? Thank you. Wow. Very touching. Thank you for sharing your story, and I look forward to what 2021 brings to you, you know, to you and your, your business and your family. And um, thank you. to end this on a good note, my pleasure. To end this on a good thank note, I like to ask a few questions off my pod decks. Oh, yeah. And uh, they're like interview questions, you know, just to make things more interesting. Ask a few, you know, if you're down to answer them. I am. All right. First question. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Be grateful. Yes. Be grateful. Just be grateful. Be thankful. Don't be greedy. Um, don't bash at the people. Don't knock anybody. 
I think that I get so much support, much more than I ever even expected or intended to get because I'm so thankful. And it literally multiplies. It comes back to me in abundance. I love that answer. Definitely be grateful. If you were to die tomorrow, what little thing would you regret not doing? What do I regret not doing? Hold on. What would I regret not doing? You know, I would regret... Business-wise? Yeah, or anything. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Business-wise. You know what? I would regret not going as hard as I should have. Because even right now, I know I don't put in exactly 100%. I know that there's room for improvement. And I know that I can go a little bit harder every day. And I know I don't do that. But... I mean, small baby steps here and there. Um, family and friends definitely do help me push towards that. So thank you to them again. But if I were to die tomorrow and the Sedona company was still in the same spot and I didn't do anything about it, what was the point? <laughs> you know what I mean? But Or not even tomorrow, like in a year from now. You know, so much has happened from when I first started to now that if I didn't push to get to where I wanted to be, I would have regretted it. Okay. Love it. Let me just ask one more question. What characteristics are you most known for? Most known for? Again, I like to think I'm a pretty chill person, like very calm. Um, people tell me my facial expressions crack them up because I kind of like talk with my face. So again, like when <laughs> when things happen, I'll just be like, Ooh, or like, or when <laughs> people are on my website at 1159, I'll just be like, I really talk with my face, but I don't really you know, speak on much. So um, I think that's what I'm known for, I guess. Um, I've had a, a lot of people tell me that, like, oh, your facial expressions, I can't. Then your <laughs> daughter has the same facial expressions. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I wonder I where she gets cool. them from. It's, uh, it's your personality and it's uh, your yeah. it's how you are. I think, I'm, I think I'm pretty chill. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. We would have to, you know, go get some Gatheo one day or something for you to find out. But thought you never asked. I love Gatheo. I live for Gatheo. So, yeah. It's my favorite spot. I know. I always watch your snaps of those empty bowls. Yeah. I actually <laughs> eat the, drink the whole broth, you know. <laughs> so I just can never have enough Cathil. I know. That's <laughs> right. I had some the other day. But thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being my guest. And um, yeah, until until next time, uh, keep it positive. I'm sending good vibes to everybody. Anybody that has a small business, you know, I support you guys, you know. Just don't give mm -hmm. up. Stay true don't to who up. you are, and um, work hard, and uh, everything will come into everything will fall into place. You know, just do what you love and have fun doing it. I'm having so much fun. Thank you so much. Thank you, and um, we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you for tuning in. Bye. 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 -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.